So if you haven't been watching the news, and who could blame you, GameStop has been trying to sell itself, like the entire company, over the last few months, but as of this past Tuesday, decided to abandon those plans, because it turns out nobody actually wants to buy GameStop. We had a joke all set to go about several buyers having expressed interest but deciding against it when GameStop refused to take any more used copies of Sears as trade-in credit, but honestly, there's nothing funny about any of this. GameStop, less than a decade ago, still riding high at the center of a boom time for console gaming, now being unable to attract a buyer basically means that the market reality has shifted so profoundly that the clock is probably about to simply run out on the company and with it the idea of specialty games retail itself. And it's as irritating as it is unsurprising that the gamer culture largely didn't seem to know about this, or worse, consider it to be either an innate irrelevancy at this point or even a good thing because, hey, screw GameStop, right? Now, look, GameStop sucks. You won't hear me argue that. It's it's shady, it's pricey, it's tacky, you have to deal with the mall, they try to upsell you on crap you don't need, scummy policies, mostly a toy store at this point, and there's a certain karma to the idea of them going under because digital sales are basically wiping out physical media because they push smaller chains and indie game stores out of business to get where they are in the first place. I get that attitude. I just also know that it's wrong, because it's the same attitude people had when things started to go south for Blockbuster, and yeah, Blockbuster was a shitty company that itself did a number on mom and pop video stores before Netflix and Amazon did the same to them, but it didn't change the fact that it still effectively meant the end of physical movie retail, and as a film critic and film fan, I can tell you that movie culture has indeed been made permanently worse as a result in specific important ways, chiefly the loss of connection, loss of community, loss of access, loss of consumer power, not uncoincidentally, all things that the loudest self-described hardcore gamers will always shout the loudest that they are committed to, but will, in my experience, also be the first to trade away at the slightest inconvenience. Meaning that I have effectively zero confidence that the gaming scene will not suffer the same loss if the retailer we all love to hate really is in as bad a shape as it seems to be now. At the basis level, no matter how useful online shopping is, and I'm certainly not some Luddite against internet retail, the loss of brick and mortar retail of any kind as an option for consumers is in fact a loss of community and human connection. One less place to go and encounter people in multiple different contexts for the sake of it and also for the necessary perspective reset that the other end of a transaction still involves a person or persons whose life is as valid as yours. But specific to gaming, the retreat from physical to digital spaces in general has been an overwhelmingly toxifying transformation for a media that previously relied on physical and tactile component of interaction, both in playing games themselves and just interacting with the media more broadly to curb the ugly flip sides of isolation and detachment innate to so much of the video gaming experience. Yes, online gaming has expanded communities and connections in its own right, but it's no accident that the fading away of actual human contact, acknowledgement, and consequence once found in the atmosphere of the arcade and local multiplayer directly preceded the rapid emergence of a genuine dark side within the subculture. <laughs> Yes, I'm aware that they still sell physical games at big box stores, for now. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't you go down to Best Buy and tell me how their CD section is looking? Exactly. Oh, and speaking of which, are there any oldish, quirky stuff you maybe wanted to grab off the Wii Shop channel? Well, too bad. It's gone now. This isn't about being anti-digital distribution any more than it is being pro-GameStop, all right? I like digital media sales, especially for gaming. It provides a space for independent developers to thrive and be visible, cuts down on waste, good for the environment, good for gamers in difficult regions and accessibility issues, all vital and positive evolutions of the medium and the market. But I like it best as a companion to physical sales, not a replacement, because the key important thing that digital can't replace about physical media is the freedom and power it grants you, the consumer, you, the gamer. You. Look, there's a lot of nagging irritations I do dislike about digital sales and storefronts in gaming, many of them surrounding the frankly pathetic Apple-esque corporate filleting consumption cult religious fervor people attach to f***ing steam. and the manipulatively panderific pro-consumer ass-padding Valve engages in to keep it at a rolling boil, but my main problem is that digital only effectively erases media ownership as a concept. We're all just renting at full price now, and they change the terms or yank things away whenever they want. And if you do call yourself 
pro-consumer or anti-censorship especially, you should have serious concerns about the implications of that. Because a world where physical media ceases to be and everything is digital is one where any company can decide they don't want that game you bought to have the same designs or elements or anything else about its content as it did when you bought it anytime they want or even to exist at all and you can't do a damn thing about it. Now I know someone out there is sneering, yeah, well, GameStop is really just for toys and used games anyway. To which I say, again, this is less about GameStop than it is about why you should care about the impending end of physical game sales, period. But since you asked, Firstly, a thriving used game scene is one of the ways we kept some level of consumer level archiving in existence. The games industry clearly isn't interested in its own actual history. And as to toys, uh, you know, up front I talked about the idea of community and how much the real life component to that continues to be lost in gaming. And I know not everyone who's into games is also into the merch and associated products and plasticky nerd culture ephemera associated with even their favorites. but. A lot of people are, and moreover, I genuinely think that a lot of the positive, social, communal, humanistic aspects of the games culture gets expressed through these extended elements of gaming narratives, characters, iconography, being incorporated by people into their own self-styled aesthetic, acting as a tactile piece of the shared experience. You know, there's value, or there can be value, in the idea that those elements can be appreciated apart from their source function as expressions of the ones and zeros and challenge component of the games themselves, in the idea that a plush post Pokemon can become a cherished object that potentially outlives one's connection to any of the individual games, or that a gaming shirt, coffee mug, keychain, or whatever becomes someone's favorite one of those, and that the bigger, broader idea that this, yes, often tacky, usually disposable, and unnecessary stuff can be the signifiers by which gamers identify each other outside of gaming-centered spaces and friends who might not have become so meat in the first place. Look, everyone who's ever shopped there has a dozen shitty GameStop stories, but how many gamers all also have happy stories of being able to find the game they couldn't anywhere else there, or happened on a game they'd never have heard of that turned out to be a favorite. How many incidental memories about figure collecting or card trading don't exist without multiple visits? How many first jobs were had there? So yeah, GameStop is basically a chintzy gaming themed pawn shop at the end of the day, but especially in the US, if you're not in a major city with a thriving con circuit or even a gaming meetup scene, which is a lot of places people, seriously, the further you get from the parts of this country that touch like salt water or Canada, there's quite a few stretches that are basically just Fury Road with a couple more mega churches and Chick-fil-A's. I mean, not everybody gets to go to E3 or PAX or whatever. The local GameStop is, was often it for any sense of real world games community. And if your response to that is, well, that's sad. Yeah, it is. And I'm not looking forward to it getting any worse. Just a thought.